Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Lorraine, and this week we're going to make the Eye of Sauron move. So you may not have seen my videos around for a while, and that's because I've been doing this really important thing, and that's finishing my PhD thesis. And when I submit the thesis, like the actual document itself, uh, my supervisors and my colleagues at work and my friends and my husband all got together and got me this, 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 this is what they got me. This massive Lego kit has 10,000 pieces. You build it in three sections. And that's exactly what I did over the Christmas holidays. <laughs> Look. Look at her. So this is the Eye of Sauron, um, which famously, like, it's kind of like fire in the movies. And what they've done, Lego have done, is they've added this uh, red light block. So it kind of makes the eye kind of glow. <laughs> so the plan is to make the eye move. Um, so we're going to add a couple more Lego bricks. So it does move. You can see it kind of moves left to right. It moves up and down a lot better. Um, the only reason it doesn't move all the way left and right is because it hits the stick at the back here. So I think that that's easily fixable with like just a, a few more Lego bricks to make it stand out from that stick so we can get a proper left-right tilt. Um, and then it'll look like it's following people across the room, which is what we want. Um, but it won't just look like it's doing that, it will be doing that because we're going to add a camera into the structure. Um, and that camera is going to detect faces. So it's going to be like some machine learning in that camera. It detects a face, it locks onto that face, and then it moves the eye to follow that person around the room. <laughs> so from the front of the tower, we have a couple of options for hiding the camera. Like it would go really cool if it was in like this window or this arch. Um, but these aren't windows, you know, they don't, they don't go through to the other side. So I'd have to drill some Lego for the camera to be able to see out. If you want to hide the camera behind here, I'd have to drill a hole. And that, along with gluing Lego, <laughs> drilling Lego is like a deadly sin, right? So I'm not sure about that. But I think the servo should be pretty easy to figure out. Let me spin this very carefully. So yeah, mounting two servos here and like having metal sticks, like even like a paper clip will be enough to attach onto the eye. So you can see the stick I was talking about and how the eye hits off that stick left and right. So I think if I just move the eye out further, that will solve that problem. But yeah, the servos are gonna hide really nicely, I think behind here. We could even expand the stage a bit because you're not gonna see that from the front. But yeah, I'm really excited for this project. I think um, it's going to be a really subtle effect. You know, when someone walks in the room and they see this, they think, oh, cool. And then they walk up to it and then they realize the eye is following them. I think it can, we could get some really great reactions from this. So I've started with some equipment. Uh, I've got some servos, just really actually quite simple. Um, weak servos, you know, they don't need to be super strong to move that eye. And then I got the Raspberry Pi AI camera because I wanted to try this and see what it's like. Ooh, this cable feels really chunky. Oh no, there's just two of them. It still feels quite a lot more solid than the other camera cables. Oh yeah, that's... It's quite, it's still thin, but it feels really, really solid compared to the other cables. So I didn't realize that the servo board is actually not soldered. So we're going to give that a quick solder. So this is the hat that sits on top of the Pi to control the servos. So that's the hat on. I'm going to put some pins on here for the servo. I'm going to put like um, some here and some here and some here because I haven't worked out exactly where the wires need to go yet. So I'm going to give myself a lot of choices. This might look really messy to you. <laughs> But I haven't soldered in absolutely ages, so I'm actually uh, really happy with this. When I first started soldering, I'd always be trying to unjoin the holes that I'd joined together accidentally. Um, I still use probably too much solder, but 
I'm really happy with that, actually. Except for... that. <laughs> so the connections are solid, but it's just a little bit lifted off the board. Um, so it'll be a little crooked on the board. Um, but that'll be fine. I've just realized what I've done, though. So that's the board all ready to go. Before we start getting the servo installed, we just need to change uh, the I squared C options on the Pi. Just make sure that it's enabled, like so. Um, then you'll be able to see that your device is plugged in. And these instructions are on the Adafruit website. So it's like this link here, which brings you here, which shows you how to do that. Then we can start testing. Yay! Yay! So back at the instructions, always do an update and an upgrade, even if you've just burnt a new card. It's still, there's still a lot of stuff in there that you need. Um, so we're going to install IMX500 because that's the camera software. I really like typing barrackdoor.local. <laughs> After we install this, we're going to do a quick reboot. There's lots of different examples of pose detection in the Raspberry Pi library. I'm just going to show you three briefly that I'm interested in. If you want to see me and my husband play around with these a bit more, check out the Element 14 website. Number one is object detection. So it's detected me, a person. It's kind of 73, 80% sure I'm a person. And then it's detected a bottle behind me. Then we have pose detection. So this is using the PoseNet library. So it's detecting elbows, shoulders, and hips, which is pretty good. And this one, I can't always get working straight off the bat. This is pose detection um, using the Pi Camera 2 library. And that's what I really liked for the second that it showed up. But that doesn't mean the other libraries wouldn't give me this level of detail. This is just this example, right? Um, so I'm going to play around with the code and see what is the best one for just getting coordinates. I don't actually need face, I just need body. So the first one, whereas identifying a person would work. So with the tower then, I've taken off the top, the very top piece and added some extra pieces. So now it does turn right, much right and left much easier. So that's done. On the top here, we're going to actually feed the camera through so it sits at the front. Um, so I've created some space um, with this layer between that layer and the camera cable is going to run through here so it's not going to get squished and it's going to sit between these two spikes. Here's the eye from the front, so I'm really happy because the pie is on this and you cannot see it at all. Um, but I just scroll down a bit. There's the camera. <laughs> so it's not perfectly uh, camouflaged, like the green kind of gives it away, but I think we might be able to get rid of the green a bit. But the gold really matches the theme, right? I did have to take out some pieces. So this piece here, two of these sticks went in front of the camera. But I haven't drilled anything and I haven't glued anything. So I'm really happy with that. Here's the back of the eye then. So we've got our extra piece of Lego, our paper clip, our servo, our servo holder, and then the pie with the servo hat attached, and that is all attached onto this tower with some tape and double-sided tape. So we will have a power cable for the pie here, a power cable for the servo, and then the HDMI cable as well coming out. But everything should fit. <laughs> and it's getting so close to being ready, I'm really excited. We look closely. I've made this little Lego cage to hold the servo in place. And when we spin the servo, the eye does move left to right. But all this is, there's a lot of pressure here and this keeps popping off and these keep falling off. Um, so what I'm going to do is, and I need two of these, so I want to flip them that way. So I'm just going to 3D print something. I'm really happy with the paper clips. I think they work really well, but I need a bit more kind of movement around here. So everything needs to flip and move towards the eye. 
here's the servo holder. So um, servos go in the top here, here and here. There's room for all the different parts. And then this is going to connect onto the tower using some Lego rods. So let's get that printed. While the 3D printer was printing then, my husband rebuilt the tower. So you can see we've got these sticks here. They're gonna hold the servo in place. And he also rebuilt this section to hold the pie in place. So we built this kind of cradle for the pie made out of Lego. So we can, again, attach these using um, some of these rods. Here's the servos held together. There they are in their 3D printed container. It's really nice. So this is the camera going over um, between the main tower and the eye. Uh, it does have to kind of bend a little bit, but, and it's also a lot shorter, so it's just not as far hanging down. But the servos, so they just slide on here. So that's the top view, and those servos just sit so nicely there. One of the horns has fallen off, but I just love 3D printing, how exact you can be. Then we can place the eye back on. Actually had that on the wrong way around, but here's the stoppers. Um, Cause I think there's gonna be a bit of pressure here. So it might chuck itself off. So this is the keep the green 3D printed shelf on the tower. What I have to do next then is to program the servos because they don't have uh, any idea what position they're in. So I'm gonna have to set them like maybe to this kind of vertical position and say, this is position zero. And then when I want it to turn left, go to position minus 20, plus 20, you know, just a matter of calibrating it through code. Then I have to get the tower back onto the main body and hope that it doesn't topple from the weight of everything. It's quite difficult to film black Lego. <laughs> But actually, I think this is a lot better. So you can see less of the gold, but also it just, it blends a lot better than the previous setup. Here's the code from Adafruit. So we're just doing, we've tested some numbers of what down, left, right, and up might be. Our reset is 90, so everything goes back to 90. So it'll go down, then back to the middle, left, then back to the middle. Down, left, right, and up. I really like up. <laughs> Let's get coding then. So what I'm gonna do is find the servo positions for each corner of the camera screen. So I'm gonna get my husband to stand in the four corners of the camera, and I'm gonna find the position of his eye in each corner. Uh, I'm gonna move the servo. So this code here, um, let's me move the servo very quietly, like five steps with a capital W, one step with a small W, it's gonna go up. And then D is left and A is right. Let me show you that. So the first program we run is the pose estimation. So it should display. So we look down here. That's Phil, so I'm going to tell Phil to go <laughs> left. Oh wait, no, go, yeah, go left. So he's on like the corner of the screen uh, and then I'm going to move the servo to look as far left as possible. Stop, come back, stop. Right, that's just the very corner of the screen. <laughs> it's just so much fun. Uh, right, now I'm going to run the I program and using A, S, D and W, uh, I'm going to move the eye as far left as it will go. Is that looking at you, Phil? That's looking at me. <laughs> That's pretty much spot on, actually. Yeah. Okay. And I need to write down the coordinates of that on my little piece of paper. So the camera is, no, the servo is minus 1142. And then I get the camera coordinates and we repeat. Now we have those camera coordinates. 
um, and the server coordinates, we're going to put them together and make a homography matrix. So this is for OpenCV. There's our motor code. And this is the IMX500 pose estimation higher HR net demo. Um, we've just used most of this code and here's mine. So taking that first coordinate from the key point, and that seems to be his left eye. And I'm using the homography matrix, where is it? H here to kind of transform the camera coordinates into servo coordinates. So then I can go and send what the servos need to be. There's a servo for left and right and a servo for up and down. So I'm gonna send that data to them. If it doesn't detect anybody, it goes back to its default position, which is middle. <laughs> That's going to lose me. Yes. That's quite freaky. <laughs> So that's this week's project finished. What do you think? How do you, how would you have done this differently? Um, I think one thing that I would have changed, I will change, is the wire to the eye. It's um, even just after a few times, it's starting to bend and not move as well because like the calibration is now off. So I might look at maybe a sturdy wire, but the problem is I have to be able to bend the wire to put it into the servo horn and onto the Lego piece. So how do I get a strong piece of wire that's thin enough that I can bend, but that won't bend under pressure. <laughs> Overall, I'm really happy with this project. It had a bit of everything. It had some 3D printing, it had some Python, it had some cameras, and obviously it had quite a lot of Lego. What was your favorite bit? What I'm really impressed with is the Raspberry Pi camera, how fast it is. If you look back at my previous videos involving the camera, we had a game and we had a, a light show where you move your hands. It was so slow. It was like excruciatingly slow. And oh, I had a makeup one as well. Uh, I wonder like, should I redo those videos using this camera? I hope you've really enjoyed this video. There are outtakes, uh, STL files and code files all on the Element 14 website. And I'll be there if you want to ask me questions about this build. Till next time.